All right, today we have Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 8. This one was called The Shibuya Incident. You know how excited I am to say that. Remember, if you guys want the full, unedited, uncut version of this episode, as well as the other shows I'm watching, check out that Patreon down below. If not, please leave a like on this video. Please leave a comment down below, because it really does help me with that YouTube algorithm. I appreciate y'all immensely. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, JJK, Season 2, Episode 8. Let's do it. Last we left off, Gojo just walked in. And like I said, if there's... Ooh, if there's any references to other animes or easter eggs i'm missing please let me know there's another veil is gojo actually walking on them or is he doing like the infinity thing where he's not actually stepping on them i don't think he's stepping on them but imagine he's just bouncing on your head we got mei mei yuji and who is this little man what is he holding I had to lay down a perfect spot to sit. Can't even, can't even see their names because of the background. But we have Team Mei Mei, which we know Mei Mei, who's a great one. She was one of the ones helping promoting Yuji. He has a evaluation postponed. Evaluate us, bro. I mean, it's all good. We'll get it during this arc. His name is Yui Yui. If her name is Mei Mei and his name is Yui Yui, and she's calling her, uh, he's calling her Nisama. I'm assuming. Yeah, instead of right here, treated as family relationships, right? So I'm assuming this is little bro. So we got another veil lowered, so we're about to go to that one. I wonder what's hidden. Is that her axe that she uses all the time? Keep up. Okay, we know Yuji's quite fast. I want to see Yui Yui fight. I want to see Mei Mei fight again. I want to know their relationship and their backstory because it seems a little weird. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Jogo? Hanami? Is that Choso, whatever his name is? Are we really 3v1ing some special grades right now? Are these not all three special grades? There's a veil to keep ordinary people covering the entire underground. And then within that, there's another, the second veil that prevents sorcerers from entering. Okay, like the observations right now. Specifically between the two veils. That's going to set uh, Yuji off. That's his arch nemesis right here. Look at that. Oh my god. I just got goosebumps. I cannot wait for this fight. You guys have no idea. Yuji and Mahito round two. This is going to be Mahito right here. Or this is Mei Mei searching because we know her curse power lets her connect with animals, right? Oh, I love it. I love that. That's a cool power. Okay. She has all the info she needs. I feel like we're in a video game. I love this. The main, yep, train platform. Bro, I'm loving this. This arc is going to be so good. I agree. It's very much unclear why they're choosing the positioning and the strategy they're choosing. But that's all Yuji cares about. So pretty much TLDR, what you just said. He's below us, right? Mahito? I don't know how I feel about Meimei so far. I'm actually really liking her, which is shocking because I didn't think I would like her. I'm not usually like people. I don't usually like people who only care about money, you know? Oh, no hesitation. I'm hearing. What is this? The bug curse? Oh my fucking god. It's a grasshopper. It's the scariest looking grasshopper I've ever seen. And the fact that you're munching on an innocent dude like that, and ha, Yuji's got to put you out, buddy. Jujutsu. Jujutsu. Today, Junior. That's what Geto was using on the veil the, on the other episode. Maybe it's an imbued object that's putting... Yeah. Okay, I'm liking the thinking from Yuji so far. Thank you, Yuji. Stop listening to the... Oh my god. I have a feeling Yuji's gonna go off this arc. He's gonna get revenge for so much bullshit that happened to him in season one. What curse are you? The grasshopper curse? <laughs> I 
<laughs> this guy is fucking... I can't with this curse. Bro, he's so should You were able to tell that? How? How could you tell that? He's clever. I am glad we're somewhat sticking with one team in this one, though. Because I feel like... Locusts. Oh, that would be horrible. It's so funny. I'm not even joking. I just want to have a quick little 30 second side rant. That's so funny. I've never heard of Locust before like a week ago when I was watching a Netflix animal documentary and they were talking about, I'm not joking with you, an actual Locust swarm like that that travels from, oh, where was it? It was like Salvador, Ecuador, something like that. It travels from country to country doing what they're saying. I'm talking when they say they demolish their entire forest, this, that, like, Normally, I'd be like, okay, locusts, grasshoppers, whatever, but this is actually some real deal shit. I'm not joking. And there's billions in this swarm that I saw in real life, not in some fucking JJK shit. I just love how this is so jokingly, because a locust and a grasshopper is not intimidating, but the idea, the sentimentality behind it, you know, like, this actually makes sense. I get it. Okay. Yuji is being so smart right now. He's being defensive to see if he can bait out any abilities or cursed energy that he's not ready for. Like, this is this is real deal shit. Like, you cannot risk one mistake during these fights, you know? I respect it. Yuji is the type of character that would just run in any way and not care about your abilities. So this I'm loving. I'm loving this. Ooh. Finally get some cursed imbued fists. A one-two punch. The two fists versus the four fists. Who comes out on top? Okay, the okay. Got him okay. Bro, this is the wrong show. This isn't One Piece. You're not supposed to do a gum gum gatling. He's really machine gun fucking shit. Bro, Yuji's gonna go so crazy this arc. I'm still hoping Maki gets a moment. Nanami, Gojo, Geto, Nobara, Megumi, Eno, Cho. I want literally everyone to have a moment. Ooh, good dodge. I was worried about that. He's hitting you with the penis attack. Ooh, and again with the dodge, with the spin under into the abdomen break. And no trick could overcome. Even with the gap in her strength, Yuji still playing this very smart, still playing this. And he broke the veil thing? Did it work? Shout out Yuji, man. He always does a signature prayer afterwards, whatever he's doing. What do you mean? Like, you're not gonna fight them? Where are you going, buddy? Where are you? I mean, our evaluation was postponed, but you know what I'm saying? Kusakabe? I do like that aspect. Like, a lot of it, because I consider this like a branch of Hunter x Hunter when it comes to like the Nen and Curse relationship. So, think of, I'm thinking about it in a Hunter x Hunter perspective. Somebody getting as strong as Yuji being high up in the Hunter Association without having an ability and just being pure, raw strength, you know, on some Uvo shit. Literally what she's saying about, about, uh, Yuji right now, but I want to know what she... Kusakabe. So someone who's as strong as Yuji, also technique-less, or at least up until this point. So I'm very curious about that. I love the world building. I love how Yuji's just straight pause. Whether you run or not, we're still going to kill these people. Oh my god. He's not lying. Talk about a hindrance. He essentially can't do anything. He can't unleash his power at all or he'll kill everybody. How do you play defensive trying to protect... He has blood manipulation? 
First off, I don't want to pause it again because I paused it so much. I haven't seen Cho so fight yet. I want to see him fight so bad. It makes sense that he's Blood Moon. Isn't he related to like Camo? Like a part of the Camo clan or something? Because one of Camo's ancient ancestors with the concubine lady fucked her like, uh, impregnated her and abortion like a hundred. Remember the whole story about the the painting, the obscure painting, whatever it was? It would make sense that he has blood manipulation, but it's so... <laughs> that limitless, what do you do? Double fist, still doing nothing. Domain amplification? They're getting so close. They're inching closer and closer. Simple domain. So it's mainly to get through his limitless. That's what I'm saying. It's not a bad idea at all. Especially for untouchable Gojo. Void is what I was thinking. Infinite Void. That's so... The amount of work we're going just to limit anything Gojo can do. I just, I love the attention to detail. It's so crazy for anyone else. Like if Tanjiro, Yuji, Yuta was stuck in this situation with people's lives being on the line, it would work for them. But Gojo, he doesn't give a fuck. This is what I'm most looking forward to, the prison realm. They've been hyping this up since like episode 6 of season 1. I'm about to pull... Mm. So there's so much going on. It's still to me, feels like the just start of the arc. Like, it still feels like we're just starting the Shibuya incident. That's why it's titled that. We're officially green light going. Go... Okay, I'm trying to remember the teams. I don't remember fully all the team names. We had... Ino, Megumi, and Nanami. I'm pretty sure. Cannot wait for them to do stuff. I love them so much. We got Yuji, Mei Mei, and... How do you pronounce his name? Is it Yui Yui? Who is the brother, little brother of Mei Mei. Their relationship seems very interesting, we'll say. But I'm very impressed with Yuji's mental, strat strategic, and physical upgrades this, this episode so far. Like one, he's always been a fighter, always been willing to put his life on the line to do whatever. But to be as observative as he was fighting that locust and being afraid of a, not afraid, but being worried passive because of a potential ability that could cost him his life and then and then it, at the end their raider was just like even if he does have an ability motherfucker you're so strong but you never know because that little ability might if you even if you're so uh, i love the thought uh, the carefulness what other teams do we have we have nobara maki and uh the other older zenin guy now Beto is that his name cannot wait to see that team that's what i'm saying we have so much and then we have a bad guy team as well. We got uh, Choso, Jogo, and Hanami. Like, come on. They're putting in work down there. Hanami is straight murdering people. Go Jogo is straight setting them on fire. Choso with the blood manipulation. Oh, my God. Are there any other teams I'm forgetting? There probably is. You know me. I got horrible memory. Oh, I remember there's a 1930 samurai guy. Who was he part of? Panda, right? Where's Inumaki? I'm very curious. Very curious. But absolutely loving this so far. Yuji versus the Locust curse. Thoroughly enjoyed that. I didn't get to see Mei Mei go off, but I, I enjoyed her description of everything going on, how her and Yuji are going to divide their forces, why the strategy we're taking is the best. I love how the map they gave us, it looks like a video game map. I love the... Re There's so many references and shit in this. Like I just love it so much. A locust curse was scary in and of itself. That was the big fight of this episode, was the locust curse. That's why I'm saying this arc is going to be incredible. We're going to get so many fights. I love Jogo and Hanami using 
they just said what it was called how did i already forget like a version of the they call it domain amplification because it envelops themselves in the domain so not you so it's not going to be a guaranteed hit but it at least guarantees they go through your technique it's a technique shutter downer kind of like what miwa and uh, muta mekamaru were doing with the simple domain like i'm loving the differences the act the compounding of information oh the show is so good uh overall fantastic episode we're blessed to be weekly anime fans hopefully you guys enjoyed this as much as i did if you did please leave a like let me know your thoughts down below check out that patreon all that jazz other than that we're gonna drink some water tell someone you love them have a great day dapper squad peace out